So it just happened, the budgeting app that I launched a couple weeks ago finally got its first paying user. I was sitting at a coffee shop when I got a notification that that upgrade went through. I have been waiting for this moment for honestly the last couple months. I knew it would happen, I just didn't know when. This is the most confirmation that you can get as a builder that you actually created something of value. Even though this is a huge milestone to hit, we're just getting started and obviously I'm gonna be taking you guys along for the journey. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. My name is Chris and I build productivity apps. I usually focus on one productivity app per video, so today we're focusing on Luna. Quick context, Luna is a budgeting app that I created to help me curb spending, and it's also just a project for me to get better as a developer and a designer. So if you wanna follow along, I have a playlist, I'll link it down below, that has all the videos from the beginning when I was just conceptualizing this app, all the way to this video now, which is me making my first dollar with the app and giving the one month update since we launched. Okay, so going back to this first paying user, I just wanna to touch on why this is really important to me. The reason that I do look at the paying users and revenue is it's a really good signal for me to know that I'm actually creating value. If someone is willing to pay $5 a month for a product, it means that you really created at least $5 a month worth of value for them, which for apps, that's a pretty high bar to hit. So I really look at the revenue as a benchmark of have I created that much value for users? Did I work on the right features? Are they using it every single day to the point that they're willing to upgrade and subscribe? Something really important to note too was the way that I set up the paywall and the subscriptions, everyone that signs up gets a free trial automatically so they don't have to give me a credit card. And the reason I set it up this way is I don't want anyone to subscribe because they forgot to cancel the trial. I want them to subscribe because they genuinely love the app. And I double checked and I confirmed that this paying user, they did sign up, use the entire 14 days, basically used it every single day, and then chose to upgrade. So this wasn't a situation where they forgot to cancel something. They genuinely were using this app every single day. And then by the end of the trial, they were like, this is an app I need to stick with. Once I confirmed that this subscription was a real subscription, they actually got value from the app. That's when I decided to take this seriously as real validation that I'm on the right path here. So that's how I think about revenue. And that's what I decided to take from this milestone. So this is primarily a recap video. So let's talk about what I did in the last month since launch. So the one focus I've had in the last month is to improve week one retention. To quickly summarize what week one retention is, it's how many people after sign up are still using the app one week later. The reason I look at week one retention is because similar to revenue, it's a really good indicator of how valuable the app is. If a lot of people sign up and then just stop using it after day one, Clearly I'm missing something. I need to go talk to them and figure it out. And I need to probably build out more features to get them to at least keep using it for one week straight. If week one retention increases, there's a very high chance that the paid upgrades would increase too. So the way I'm solving that is by talking to users, figure out what the app is missing, and then just relentlessly building out these features. So I got this feedback board. People can add things. They can upvote features that they want to see. And so in the last month, here's the things that I've shipped from the feedback board, which in my opinion, every single feature I ship has the possibility of increasing this week one retention. So one of the first things that I shipped was charts and reports. Now there's this new tab over here where when you click it, you can see a couple charts. I actually had to test a couple iterations and the original thing I wanted to do was actually build out this bar chart where you can see your spending over the week, click into each day, and it'll show you the transactions for that day. I made a lot of progress on that and probably spent almost like a week on that. It just didn't feel right. It didn't really feel like it answered the questions I needed. I really wanted to know, am I on track with my spending? Have I been overspending? I really wanna be able to see my spending patterns. Even though this was a good start, it just didn't really answer the question for me. So I had to go back to the drawing board a few times and I ended up studying a bunch of other budgeting apps to figure out what did they do? What kind of charts do they have? So one app that I like was Copilot and one of their charts actually has a line that shows what's your projected spend supposed to look like and then you can actually see your spend on a second line so you can see how close are you to that projected spend. Does it look like you're about to overspend or maybe you have a little bit more wiggle room to spend a bit more. So that's one example of a chart. And then there were some other charts that I liked from other apps like Monarch and YNAB. So I ended up settling on these three charts. So the first chart is the one that I kind of took from Copilot. It plots your budget and you can see how close you are to that projected budget. The second one is just a simple line chart to show you how much have you spent versus last month. I absolutely love how this was visualized. I experimented with a bar chart that didn't really work out and an overlaid line chart where you can see this month and then last month was just the perfect way to visualize this. And then the last chart was just a bar chart so you can see your spend month over month. You can kind of see if there's any anomalies here. Why did I spend so much in July? What happened there? I had car problems, that's what happened there. So I sat with these charts for a while and I actually really ended up liking them. Something that I didn't plan was these charts actually ended up motivating me to keep the app up to date because if I keep logging transactions and keep it up to date, then I knew the charts would be up to date. Hoping that I'm not alone there and some other users find it useful too. And knowing that there are these charts, they'll be more motivated to keep updating the app and keep using it. So that hopefully people end up building that habit and then that improves week one retention. So second big thing that I haven't shipped yet, but hopefully by the time the video is out, it is actually live is recurring transactions. 
This is the most requested feature on the feedback board. It has over 200 upvotes. It's basically the ability to add a transaction that repeats over time. This is great if you wanna log something like your rent or a gym membership or some subscription so you don't have to keep inputting into the app. I think this is a great idea. The reason I didn't ship it with V1 is because I've done this in the past with my other app, Ellie. It has recurring tasks. I do this with my other app, Mogul, which has recurring reminders. Recurring stuff is by far the most complicated, buggy parts of the app. I'm pretty sure that 80% of the bugs reported for my other app, Ellie, have to do with recurring transactions. And it's because they're just so complicated. And I'll probably make a separate video about how the feature works, why it's so complicated for people that are interested, but just know it is very challenging. And so I really wanted to hold off on this as long as possible, but enough people asked, so I can't ignore it anymore. So I decided I'm gonna go ship that and that should be launching in the next few days. It seems very simple, but it is very complicated under the hood. So when you create a transaction, you can now select how often you want it to repeat. I have a set number of repeating intervals here that I'm basing off of other budgeting apps. I did build this in a way where I can support custom recurrences, like very complex things, like repeat on the last Thursday of the month. I'm gonna make my life easier right now, not do that until enough people ask. Once you create it, there's a couple of places in the UI where you can see these repeating transactions. So when I go into the future, I can see like my LA Fitness membership. This is a future event, so I have this little marker that says this is upcoming. You can actually go ahead and edit and delete these transactions. And this is where a lot of the complexity comes in. For example, when you delete this transaction, I have this pop-up so you can choose, do you wanna just delete this one or the future ones? And then the same thing applies when you edit a transaction. It's gonna ask, do you wanna just edit this one or the future one? Handling these cases makes this kind of complicated. There's a place in settings where you can manage the recurring transactions. So you can see these are all the transactions I have. I have LA Fitness, I have my rent. You can actually go ahead and edit them directly from here. I could probably make a whole video on the technicalities of this, the choices that I had to make, the trade-offs that I had to make when architecting a feature like this. This one took two full weeks of dedicated time to actually launch. By the time the video's out, maybe you can go ahead and try it. This is the second big thing that I worked on. Then there were a ton of other small bug fixes, a lot of little improvements. So another one was just kind of interesting. So in the spirit of trying to make the app really clean, in some sections of the app, I did a lot of rounding of the numbers. So then if you see, you know, 1,430, that rounds to 1.4K. It's because I didn't really care about the accuracy as much. I just needed a rough ballpark of how much I'm spending, but turns out a lot of people do care about the accuracy. So I had to kind of go back on that. And instead, you can actually turn that rounding on and off in the settings. The accuracy will go down a little bit, but the UI will look a lot more clean. That was a small improvement that I made. I've added about 30 more currencies to the app, so if you don't see your currency there, please comment below or add it to the feedback board. I will make sure to go add that. Then a lot of things like crashing, widgets were kind of inaccurate, some date and time zone issues. So basically these two major things and a couple small improvements, that's what I was able to work on in the last month. Hopefully when everything is shipped, we will see a bump in this week one retention. Maybe we'll see a couple more paying users, but very, very happy with the progress I was able to make in the last month. Um, so over the next couple months, after I release the recurring transactions, I plan on working on savings. This is a very requested feature. So some way to have a savings category and let people allocate and try to save money through the app. Being able to track your income and positive transactions. This is gonna be very interesting, but it'll open up the door to zero-based budgeting in the future. And then a couple other features that I think will make the app way more useful and move the needle on week one retention. So yeah, that's where the app's at right now. Uh, really excited that I got the first paying user. It's actually pretty crazy that I've been documenting this for the last almost six months now. And you guys can go back in time, watch the first video where I just was talking about the idea of the app. You can watch the progression all the way up to this point where the first dollar was made with the app. I think that that's pretty wild. And I'm so glad that I've stuck to documenting this entire process. I also just wanted to say thank you guys so much for following along. Thank you guys so much for the thoughtful comments and the questions. If you want to learn anything, you have any questions, I'm an open book. Post it below. I'll make sure to respond to you. But Hopefully you guys found this interesting. If you like this kind of content, definitely check out my Instagram and TikTok. I post almost every other day about building productivity apps. And obviously if you like the channel, don't forget to subscribe. But thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.